The year 2025 marked a dramatic fracture in the global semiconductor landscape, sending shockwaves through industries and governments worldwide. What had once been a tightly interwoven network of supply chains and innovation suddenly began to unravel, exposing vulnerabilities that had long been ignored. Tensions between the US and China had been simmering for years, with each side maneuvering for technological dominance. These rivalries finally erupted, culminating in a sweeping blockade of chip-making tools and technologies to China, a move that would reshape the industry's future. Under intense US pressure, the Dutch government revoked ASML's export licenses, abruptly halting China's access to both advanced and mature lithography systems. This decision sent ripples through the global market as companies scrambled to assess the fallout. Chinese firms like SMIC and Hua Hong faced immediate and severe setbacks. Expansion plans were frozen overnight, and billions of dollars worth of existing equipment suddenly teetered on the edge of obsolescence, threatening the future of China's chip industry. In the West, this was hailed as a strategic victory, a bold move to maintain technological supremacy and protect national interests. But for Beijing, it was seen as an existential threat, a direct challenge to China's ambitions and sovereignty. Rather than capitulate, China responded with fierce determination. The government swiftly elevated the chip industry to a top national security priority, mobilizing resources, talent, and policy support on an unprecedented scale. The sanctions, intended to cripple China's technological progress, instead became a catalyst. Chinese engineers and entrepreneurs doubled down, accelerating research, development, and innovation at a pace never seen before. Far from ending China's chip ambitions, the blockade ignited a relentless drive for technological independence. Factories ramped up, new startups emerged, and a sense of national purpose swept through the industry. The shock of January 2025 was not an end, but the explosive beginning of China's journey towards self-reliance, a new era defined by resilience, innovation, and the unyielding pursuit of technological sovereignty. Beijing's response was immediate and bold, reflecting a sense of urgency not seen in decades. The leadership recognized that the nation's technological sovereignty was at stake, and every second counted. Operation Sovereign Silicon was launched overnight, banning all future ASML purchases, and abruptly severing ties with TSMC. This was a dramatic move, signaling to the world that China was willing to make sacrifices to secure its future in advanced technology. In a matter of hours, China disabled its ASML machines, shutting down the heart of its most advanced chip production. This act marked a point of no return, a clear message that China would chart its own path forward. The government responded with an unprecedented financial surge, unleashing over $75 billion into its domestic semiconductor sector. This funding covered everything from basic research and development to the rapid construction of new fabrication plants, aiming to close the technology gap as quickly as possible. More than 50,000 of China's top engineers and scientists were immediately reassigned to classified chip projects. Their mission, to solve the lithography challenge at any cost, working around the clock in secure facilities. At the same time, a global talent drive was launched, luring thousands of experts from around the world. Even stranded ASML employees and other foreign specialists were recruited drawn by lucrative offers and the promise of being part of a historic effort. The combination of massive government funding, nationalized engineering teams, and an influx of foreign expertise created a powerful innovation engine. Laboratories buzzed with activity as teams raced to develop breakthrough technologies. China's mobilization was unprecedented in scale and speed, transforming its chip sector into a true national mission. Every resource was directed toward achieving technological independence. The world watched with anticipation and anxiety, waiting to see if China's gamble would pay off. Analysts speculated, markets reacted, and competitors braced for impact. The stage was set for a technological leap that would stun the industry and potentially reshape the global balance of power in semiconductors. The first results of Operation Sovereign Silicon arrived faster than anyone expected, sending ripples of excitement and disbelief through the global tech community. For years, China's semiconductor ambitions had been dismissed as overhyped, but now, the world was forced to pay attention. In March 2025, Shenzhen Siker unveiled a domestic immersion lithography system capable of sub-7 nino features, a milestone that many thought was still years away for China. At a packed press conference, a live demo silenced skeptics. 
The world watched as Sikari's engineers demonstrated their machine's precision and speed. China had matched the world's best, not by copying, but by innovating and pushing boundaries. Led by Dr. Lu Xiaoming, Chinese researchers harnessed advanced AI-driven computational lithography, achieving EUV-level results with DUV machines. This leap was the result of years of relentless research and collaboration across universities and industry. This software-driven approach turned a hardware deficit into an advantage, allowing Chinese engineers to optimize every step of the process and extract maximum performance from existing tools. Huawei's earlier 7nm Kirin chip had already proven that advanced chips could be made without the latest Western tools, inspiring a new wave of confidence in domestic innovation. By June, SMIC began trial production of 5nm chips using an all-domestic supply chain. This was a feat that many global analysts had considered nearly impossible just a year before. Yields were lower than TSMC's, but the achievement was historic. China could now make near leading edge chips without foreign equipment. The sense of accomplishment was palpable in labs across the country. In less than two years, China had gone from laggard to creator, leapfrogging technological barriers that once seemed insurmountable. The breakthrough cascade, from Huawei to Sikare to SMIC, reshaped the global chip race, forcing competitors to rethink their strategies and alliances. China's iterative innovation had become a viable, even formidable, path. Each success built upon the last, accelerating progress at a pace few had anticipated. The world's technological balance was shifting, as investors and governments scrambled to respond to China's rapid ascent. China was no longer just catching up, it was setting the pace, charting a new course for the future of global technology. China's semiconductor breakthroughs sent shockwaves through global markets, ASML's stock plummeted, losing a third of its value as its largest market vanished and a new competitor emerged. TSMC too saw its dominance threatened, with over $180 billion wiped from its market cap. The era of unchallenged Western chip supremacy was over. In China, semiconductor stocks soared, fueled by state and private investment. Former ASML technicians and global talent flocked to China, shifting the center of semiconductor innovation eastward. The global tech workforce began to realign. The market tremors were more than financial, they signaled a new world order in technology. China's chip sector was now the hottest ticket in town. A new generation of Chinese tech giants was rising. The global balance of power was being rewritten. Beijing consolidated its advantage with a strategic move rare earth export controls. China restricted key materials like terbium, dysprosium, gallium, and germanium, sending global prices soaring. Western supply chains, long dependent on cheap Chinese materials, were thrown into chaos. The move was both retaliation and a boost for China's own industries, ensuring domestic supply while creating scarcity abroad. Chinese manufacturers gained a critical edge as Western firms scrambled for alternatives. The export controls exposed the West's vulnerability and accelerated China's industrial independence. The chip war had become a battle of resources as much as technology. With survival secured, China turned to long-term leadership. Massive semiconductor parks rose in Shanghai and Shenzhen, integrating R&D, manufacturing and education. Chinese firms filed over a thousand new patents, especially in computational lithography and chip design. The new five-year plan set a bold goal, total semiconductor independence by 2030. Hundreds of billions more were allocated to master the entire supply chain, from raw materials to advanced software. The plan aimed not just to catch up, but to leapfrog, investing in next-gen materials and computing paradigms. China was determined to set the standards for the digital future. The world was now watching a new leader emerge. By late 2025, the global semiconductor industry had split in two. The Western bloc, led by the US, Europe and allies, relied on ASML, TSMC and American chip designers. The Chinese bloc, built on self-reliance, was led by Sikair, SMIC and Huawei. China's digital Silk Road expanded its influence across Asia, Africa and South America. The digital divide extended to software, standards, and data, with the internet itself beginning to splinter. Multinationals now faced the challenge of operating in two incompatible tech worlds. The West pushed for ultimate performance, China focused on practical, affordable innovation. The result? A new era of technological rivalry and divergence. The stage was set for decades of competition between two global tech ecosystems. 
China's semiconductor success became tangible with the Xiaomi 17 series launch in September 2025. The phones, powered by SMIC's 5 nanometer chips, sold out instantly, symbolizing China's technological coming of age. For the first time, a flagship device was built entirely on a domestic supply chain. Aggressively priced and packed with innovation the Xiaomi 17 threatened the dominance of Apple and Samsung. The profits fueled further R&D, creating a virtuous cycle of advancement. The myth that China could only assemble, not innovate, was shattered. China now designed, fabricated, and sold world-class products. As 2025 closed, China's semiconductor independence redrew the global power map. The Western monopoly was over. A new paradigm had begun. The chip war's decisive battle was won not by sanctions, but by China's relentless drive for self-determination.